This is for people who are new to the game or switching from other game to Guild Wars 2. Many players came from other MMO games, such as World of Warcraft. I am one of them. In Guild Wars 2, profession is class. I know. In WoW, profession is letter working or jewel crafting. And wounds are buffs. If you don't understand something, you will understand over time. This is the build I use in World v World as a roamer. Romer is a build with a lot of mobility. Romer is like a lone wolf. Your main task is to prevent the progress of the opposing team, taking enemy camps or being a scout, tracking the enemy team on the map, killing players coming from the respawn point, disabling side equipment, etc. When you enter World v World, there is no traditional selection like in World of Warcraft. When you need to pick up your role, DPS, tank or healer, this is more like a sandbox. You have total freedom, make yourself a build that you want to play and know what you are best at with that build. For those who don't know, this is the thief's profession or class with dead eye specialization, but only in world v world I am using this build. There is a difference in equipment and some skills. For example, if you play Conquest, there are no opponents in Celestial Gear, and serials work differently. Then, if you play PvE, PvE is much easier, because skills cost less resources or have no restrictions, or boons last longer. But you can play this build as you choose, and see how you do. But let's be realistic, you will die a lot in PvP as a new player. Your defense is your mobility and stealth, and you have to master it in order to survive. So, let's get started. This is the standard build. It doesn't have a big burst, because I don't use critical strike specialization. I don't take critical strike specialization because there are a lot of tanky professions in World v World with celestial equipment. Even though they are in celestial gear, they have very high damage and good defense. In addition to being in celestial gear, they also have a lot of defense skills. Against experienced players, the fights are very long. That's why I recommended Shadow Arts instead of Critical Strike Specialization. You have more utility with Shadow Arts and Freedom. But that's why you can make some mistakes during the fight. It's very forgiving if you use Shadow Arts. Later, when you practice, you can change a lot in this build. The build is Shadow Arts, Trickery and Dead Eye Specialization. All specializations have 6 traits, 3 minor and 3 major, and all are passive. I will speak about each trait and give you my opinion if needed. A lot can change in the future, because they always change something. As you can see, Shadow Arts first minor trait is Merciful Ambush. It is very well explained in the tooltip, so there is not much to say. Every time you enter and exit stealth, you heal. If you are trying to revive someone, try to protect them from finisher with stealth, because you get stealth when you try to revive someone. Shadow Embrace first major trait is great against Condi professions. Since you have a lot of stealth as dead eye, when you enter stealth one condition is removed and when you exit stealth another condition is removed. That means two conditions for one entry into stealth. The second minor trait melt with shadows. Very good for mobility. Two seconds super speed when you enter stealth and two seconds when you leave stealth. The second major trait of Shadow Arts is Spider Venom. Puts poison on opponent and heals you. Poison is very good against all professions, especially against support professions. Reduce healing 33%. In PvP zone when you enter stealth, world v world or conquest, you get one stack, and when you leave stealth you get another stack. You can have a maximum of 6 stacks. It's a lot different than in PvE. In PvE, when you enter stealth, you get 3 stacks. 
and when you exit stealth you get another 3 stacks. So for one entry into stealth you get 6 stacks, what makes you immortal in PvE. Every hit you fire heals you. In PvP, if you are going to fight 1v1, you can enter stealth 3 times before the fight to get 6 stacks. Stacks on you last 30 seconds, both in PvP and PvE, and you can refresh when you have 6 stacks. Within 30 seconds, if you enter stealth again, it refresh for 30 seconds again. But if you are going to fight melee professions or professions with pets, a trade cloaked in shadow is much better trade, because it blinds snarby enemies. When they have blind, they can't hit you. You are much better against melee professions. The third minor trait is Shadow Siphoning, stuck with Spider Venom, so it's great for healing and damage. And the third major trait in Shadow Arts is Shadow Rejuvenation. This trait is must have. That I skills in PvP costs a lot of initiative. This trait gives you the freedom to use skills more freely in PvP. Every time you enter stealth you get 2 initiative, and 1 when you leave stealth, so altogether 3 initiative, which is very good, because you will be going in and out of stealth a lot during the fight. Trickery specialization is used by almost all thief pvp builds. I would like to say for the first minor trait in the trickery specialization, the dead eye does not benefit much from kleptomaniac at the beginning of the fight, because fights always start with the mark, but during the fight it is noticed. This minor trait is great for utility skill mercy, if you want to nuke someone. Mercy utility skill is a very good choice for 1v1. For example, when you place a mark on an enemy, when you see that he has spent evade, you can reset the mark with mercy utility skill and put mark on again on target. Then he won't be able to use skills for one second or evade. Then you will get extra initiative for damage from trickery minor trait kleptomaniac and mercy utility skill will turn malice into initiative. Then you can try to cause him as much damage as possible or even kill him. First major trait Trail of the Crime. When you put a dead eye mark on the target, you will get those wounds. So you will always start the fight with wounds. A very good trait. The second minor trait is great. Increase maximum initiative by 3. Without trickery specialization, you have total of 12 initiative. With this minor trait, you have 15. More initiative, more damage and mobility. Expertise as a bonus. Expertise increase how long your condition lasts on the enemy, which is good for spider venom trade. Duo the poison. You get 150 as a passive. 150 expertise increase duration of the condition on the enemy by 10%. The second major trait of trickery is bountiful theft. All fights start with that I mark. At the beginning of the fight, you will benefit from the vigor boon. But in the middle of the fight, take into account when you need to refresh the dead eye mark, try refreshing it when target has boons. The third minor trait is lead attacks. This is a powerful trait. The more initiative you spend, the more damage you do. So you will be possibly buffed constantly with 15% more damage. In addition, it reduces cooldown on dead eye mark by 15%. Sleight of Hands is a good PvP talent, because at the beginning of the fight, when you place a mark on the enemy, the enemy cannot use skills for 1 second, which gives you advantage of dealing damage first. In addition, it reduces cooldown by 20% on the mark. Stuck with Lead Attacks Lead Attacks and Sleight of Hands together reduce cooldown of the mark by 35%. Mark or Steel has 25 seconds cooldown, so with this trade only 17 seconds of cooldown, so it's hard to play without trickery specialization. Dead Eye is the main specialization in this build. 
The first minor trait is the Dead Eye Mark. The entire build and gameplay revolves around the dice mark. As you can see, the tooltip. Trickery improves the dice mark a lot. All blue lines are trickery. All the white lines are from the dead eye specialization. The first major trait is malicious intent. This talent gives you a lot of DPS. More malice means more damage. The second minor trait is renewing gaze. This trait reset cooldown when you kill your target, which is very good in small fights, when you know which target to choose, which one will die first. The second part of this trait not that useful. When your target dies, you get a boon and heal you for 390 HP. The second major trait is Silent Scope. This trait is a must. Without this trait, it is impossible to play as Dead Eye with a rifle in PvP. As the tooltip says, when you dodge, you get stealth if you are holding a rifle. In addition, it provides precision, and if you hold a rifle, you get bonus precision. Precision increases the chance for critical strike. We chose the trickery specialization and we chose the thrill of the crime trait. That trait gave us fury boon and Fury increased the critical strike chance by 20%. So when you mark your target, you will get Fury Boon. And with Silent Scope trait, your critical chance will be over 19% in PvP. And in PvP, if you use Sigil of Accuracy, your critical chance will be around 100%. The third minor trait is Iron Sight. Increase damage on market target by 10% and reduce damage from market target by 10% in PvP. In PvP it increases damage by 10% but increases defense by 15%. Because we use trickery specialization and on trickery we have trade leader attacks which give us 15% more damage. So with this trade and lead attacks with trickery specialization you have 25 more damage on the target on which you put that ice mark and receive 10% less damage from that target. The last major trait is Maleficent 7. This trait has it all. When you have 7 malice you will get these benefits. Some players use the trait be quick or be killed. Very good trait for 1v1, but it does not regenerate initiative which is very important if you are fighting two or more enemies. Now, let's talk about gear. Gear is very important in World V World. You have exotic and you have ascended gear. Ascended gear is the strongest gear in the game. It has the same strength as the legendary gear. The only difference is that you have to pay to change stat on ascended gear and you don't have to pay on legendary gear. I use gear with Marauder stats on it, with superior rune of scholar, it's good combination, because of the vitality. The profession has very low HP when you compare it with other professions. If you are a new player, the last patch added a vendor that sells exotic equipment with selected stats in World V World. The equipment is very cheap. But if you don't have gold for Marauder gear and Rune of the Scholar, there are a couple of options. You can buy Berserker gear and use Superior Rune of Vampirism. I think it's the cheapest option. The rifle is the main weapon. The sigils on the rifle I use are only available in World V World and PvE. These sigils are not in Conquest. The sigils I use are Superior Sigil of Air and Superior Sigil of Fire. Some players use the Superior Sigil of Celerity. I use it sometimes too. When you place a Dead Eye Mark on a target, you gain quickness for 5 seconds. Quickness speed up use of skills by 50%, but when you have quickness, you have a boon on you, and everyone can see. If you are fighting against an experienced player, when you put that eye mark on him, he will try to break the line of sight. And if he also sees that you have a quickness boon, he will surely use some defense skills, 
If he has a shield, he will definitely use block. Or if he has stealth, he will use stealth or something else. When I see an opponent has a quickness boon, I run as far as I can until he loses his quickness boon. There is a high chance that he will kill me. For secondary weapons, you can use what you like. You can play without secondary weapons if you like. I use a dagger pistol or sword dagger. Depends of situation. I use fireworks for the relic. A very good relic for any deep specialization because it activates when you use that I mark. The utility skills I use are all for mobility. Mobility is where that eye is strongest. You must have withdraw and shadow step. Without those two skills it is very difficult to play. You can choose other utility skills as you wish. The biggest enemies of that eye are professions with mobility and roots. That's why you have to use utility skills that remove roots. Let's talk about damage. So how do you damage? Everything is about malice. Without malice, no damage, mobility and wounds. That I has 10 rifle skills. When you stand you have 5 and when you kneel you have 5. But you won't use most of these skills in PvP. All fights start with that I mark. You get malice only if you are attacking a market target with offensive skills that use initiative. And the main offensive skill that regenerate malice is skirmisher's shot. Skill on number two is the main offensive skill for that eye in PvP because it's cheap. Forced only three initiative. Each successful hit gives one malice, and each critical hit gives two malice. When you build up seven malice, then go into stealth. When you go into stealth, the skill at number 1 or brutal aim will be a dead judgment or sneak attack. With sneak attack, you spend malice. Dead judgment or sneak attack is the strongest skill in the build. It does the most damage. There are many ways to enter stealth. If you successfully put dead eyes mark on the target, you will get an additional skill or stolen skill. When you use that skill, you always enter stealth. Always spend that skill first if you need stealth, and then the other stealth skills if you need them. Use Dead Retreat for mobility. You have more details about Dead Retreat in my last video, if you are interested. Until you gain experience, it is best to use Utility Mercy skill. So if you make mistake with Dead Eye Mark, you can reset the cooldown. If you don't have that I mark on the target, you don't do any damage. You will burn initiative and opponents will kill you easily. There is so much to say, but I think this is some basic information for this build. And the video will be too long to watch. If you like this type of content, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.